Welcome to St. Paul's on this Christ the King Sunday. If we can serve you in any way, please make it known to us. Today we have a service of the word since there's no pastor available to officiate the Holy Communion. It's good to have Seminarian Brian Brozovic with us once again. Welcome, Seminarian Brozovic. Even after Israel had experienced the vagaries of kings, they still longed for a true king to set things right. He would have the king's title of anointed one, or Messiah. He would be the one, like a human being, son of man, given dominion in Daniel's vision. Jesus is given these titles, even though he is nothing like an earthly king. His authority comes from the truth to which he bears witness, and those who recognize the truth voluntarily listen to him. We look forward to the day he has given dominion, knowing his victory will be the nonviolent victory of love. Our entrance hymn is 328 in the Green Book, All Hail the Power of Jesus, of Jesus' name, and we're going to sing the first four verses. Blesses are you, 
O Lord, our God, King of the universe. For in your wisdom, you have formed us. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together, trust and hope, we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people on the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. To the community for whom this passage was written, it seemed as though the oppression they were experiencing would never end. Daniel's message is, it shall end. The ancient one who is judge will call all nations to account and will give dominion to one like a human being, the Messiah. A reading from Daniel 7 verses 9 through 10 and 13 to 14. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming, from the, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 93, ever since the world began, your throne has been established, but we sound responsible.
second reading. The book of Revelation begins by celebrating the Almighty God who spans all time. Similarly, Jesus is celebrated as the firstborn from the dead who rules over the world's rulers. He is the one whose return we eagerly await. A reading from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. In John's gospel, the story of Jesus and Pilate presents two different ways of ex exercising power, through force or with love. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 18, verses 33 through 37. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as, as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who listens to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Pray Thank you. Me, Let us pray real quick. Lord, thank you for bringing us here this morning on this Christ the King Sunday. In your gospel account, it says, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Lord, let us hear the truth of your word today, and let us walk out of this building with the truth in mind, and that all that we do, let us continually listen to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Wow, what a beautiful way to worship the Lord this morning. Wasn't that amazing? Well, good morning. And welcome again. Happy New Year's Eve. Right? Wait a minute. But did I did I catch the wrong? Is this the wrong time of year? I'm sorry. Well, we we did make it another year, church. It's not quite the New Year's or the New Year's Eve that we might come to know in a sense, right? But for many of us who have had just a, another year of uncertainty and change around the pandemic, we might be wishing that it was a, a new calendar year already. You know it, that, that metaphorical time in our lives where we get to use this calendar to somehow magically wipe away everything that has happened over the past year and start anew. But alas, that's, that's not the New Year's Eve that I speak of here. But we, we, we have ventured on a, a New Year's Eve of sort, a New Year's Eve for the church, as this Sunday ends our church calendar year. And next Monday, or next Sunday, we will start anew with the beginning of Advent. Today is Christ the King Sunday, or some people call it the Reign of Christ Sunday. Even more formal, we might call it the Feast of Christ the King, or even more formal and original, we might call it the Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Universe Sunday. Well, that kind of can have trouble fitting on a bulletin sometimes, so I can understand maybe the shortened version. But as we step out of this old church year, or the year that we are getting through, and we step into this first Advent in next Sunday, we enter into a time of waiting and expectation as we wait for the nativity of our coming Lord. And while there are certain holidays or festivals, or as the church might say, minor and major feasts, well, some might be more concrete in their date and maybe their, their, their history, Christmas, and Easter, right? But some are, are even going back, so those go back for millennium, but we even have some like the Reformation that we celebrate that goes back a, a half millennium, right? But today, with the Feast of Christ the King, we celebrate a feast of the church that is a little more recent in its adoption. See, in 1925, Pope Pius XI of the Roman Catholic Church, he instituted this feast. And in 1970, the church officially moved it to the last Sunday of the church year. So for a church holiday that we've celebrated for less than 100 years, it might be quite juvenile in how it is that we relate to it. But let's not let its tenure on the church calendar fool us, because its importance, while withstanding throughout the life of a Christian, it is quite timely as we end this church year and enter on into a new year. A little history on the, on the heels of World War I in 1925, and in response to a growing secularism and nationalism in Europe that would ultimately lead into the powers of Nazism and fascism in World War II, Pope Pius XI sought to redirect the church the society at large and the world back into communion with the only king of the universe, the true power, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And while our gospel text today is certainly in a form that contrasts to our last year reading through the book of Mark, we can remember these many Sundays after Pentecost 
in Mark's version of the gospel where he would keep reminding us, as I like to call it, of this upside-down kingdom that was at hand. And yet, despite Jesus' teachings and reminders to his disciples that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and that the Son of Man was going to be led before the authorities and nailed to a cross and would die but would rise again. His disciples would seemingly forget time and time again. They would chase after this theology of glory where Christ would get this earthly th throne and he would be raised up and the mighty hand of God would come down and save the chosen people of the world. But Christ, he kept pointing to something different. He kept pointing towards the cross where he would, in fact, be lifted up. And though a, a couple of millennia or millennium has passed, what is old is new again, and we have not fell too far from the disciple tree. We, too, as Christ's disciples, we seem to forget time and time again that beyond the tangible that we can grasp and beyond the loudness of the world around us, beyond our own sometimes selfish dreams and desires, lies a kingdom that is both here and now kingdom that was and a kingdom that is to come. Our earthly kings, well, they come and go. The tangibles that we worship and sin, they come and they go. And politicians falter and dynasties, they will fade away. Our reading from Daniel chapter 7 verse 14 said, His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away. And his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. If we remember from our gospel reading, Jesus answered Pilate in John 18, verse 36, with, My kingdom is not from this world. In a world where this global pandemic has created an all new climate around us, in a nation that we can find to be so divided, Polarized in our own community that can be up in arms and even sometimes in our own household where we can find a divided turmoil. It's easy to camp out and plant our flags in the isms and errors of this world. Conservatism, liberalism, communism, fascism, Libertarianism, socialism. We have maskers and vaxxers and anti maskers and anti vaxxers. Nationalism, elitism. The list is exhausting. The titles and labels that we use to identify and the ideals that we prescribe to and, and hold up, none of which can compare to the title of our Lord our Savior, our King, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, who was lifted up on a cross to die for you, me, them, everyone, regardless of affiliation or leanings. We are called to live in an eternal kingdom in the here and now a kingdom that was and a kingdom that is here to come we are called to follow a king who from our reading in revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says i am the alpha i am the alpha and the omega says the lord god who is and who was and who is to come the almighty We often pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth 
as it is in heaven, where the widow and the orphan are cared for, the broken and the sick are healed, the hungry are fed, the oppressed, the oppressed by injustice, the afflicted are comforted, and the empty are filled, and the lonely are loved. Just as Christ loved us, we are to love the stranger among us. Well, this week, we as a nation, we will also celebrate Thanksgiving a secular holiday itself, which has roots and origins in religious tradition. So in this season where we're consciously reflecting on this thankfulness that we ought to be grateful for year-round, let us be thankful for the love and service that others have shown us, and let us be a reflection of Christ's love in how we interact with all of God's children on this earthly plane. But let us not forget that the life to come is eternal, as is our King, who was and is and is to come. Often, Overquoted John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Now that is something to be thankful for. So as we venture through this season of thoughtful reflection and thankfulness and we embark upon a new year in the church calendar, let us use this as an opportunity to set a new churchly resolution on who and whose we are going to be this next year. In a world in its dividedness, may we all be united by, as we in our prayer of the day said, by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ. May we set down the isms and the errors that define us to the realms and chains of this earthly broken existence and take up the title of child of God. Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So happy new church year's eve, church. We certainly have a, a lot to be thankful for. A thankfulness that even in the shadow of the cross, we are able to do so much in the light of our King. Because our eternal King's mercy and grace are beyond any earthly understanding. And our King will always reign supreme above all. Above everything in this world that we erroneously lift up and hold up. So let us worship the only King, Christ the King. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our hymn of the day.
in communion with the saints of every time and place, let us pray for the church, those in need. Holy and ancient one, by your spirit, give the church vision to be your kingdom on earth, that freed from our sins, we testify to your truth in the world. Be with all bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Since the world began, you have nourished creation. Continue to make us good stewards of all you provide. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Guide the leaders of nation to govern their people justly and wisely that your will be done on earth as in heaven. We are mindful especially of our president and Congress, governor and legislature. Hear us, O oh God. Hear mercy and grace. grace. Grant grace and peace to all who suffer the trials of this world, especially those most dear to us, whom we now name in our hearts before you. Comfort, sustain, and uphold them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For our, for our St. Paul's faith community, as we seek to discern your will for us, as we face a future known to you alone, be our strength, our stay, and our guide. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for all who died with the sign of faith. Bring them and us at last to sing a triumphant song with Jesus Christ, firstborn of the dead, and all the company of heaven, especially those most dear to us, whom we now name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us pray as we've been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Birthdays, anniversaries, any celebrations we have this week? Making this way too easy on me. <laughs> well, we will uh, we will bypass our prayers for. Oh, we do have one. Okay, oh, that's right, yes, announcements. There's a couple here. Okay, well, um, we have a
And we need to do it more than once every 12 years because we need to fill up our pews. These pews are good pews, and they need to be. And so um, that's number one. And number two, I have a thing, a little flyer, that I'm going to be making copies of that also has our information on the back of it. That's just a little story that we can hand out to people that are parked in our parking lot across the street. And all you have to do is take a few of them with you, and if you pass by that parking lot and it happens to be full from bacon and butter, butter, bacon, whatever they are, you can put them on the on the bacon. It's our parking lot. So we can put flyers on the windows and we don't have to worry about the owners getting upset. We are the So I I would appreciate it if you'd be A talking to the kids about this escape room, anybody you know, and then I'll have flyers for it. So I, I stumbled onto this site and I just stumbled onto it, this epic calendar, so I haven't had a chance to print them out. But I will have everything all printed up next week, and I'm looking forward to having them help me out with the event. Like that. Okay. And I have sad news to report for those of you that have been here for a long time. Shirley Dodd passed yesterday. Um, her daughter, Linda, called this morning from Colorado and told us of her passing. As a lot of you know, she had suffered from dementia for many years and um, had moved to Colorado to be with her daughter and her family there. So um, she's with the Lord now. She was certainly a devout member of St. Paul's. I believe her and her husband were married here, weren't they? I think I heard her and her were very different many years ago. Um, there, Linda would like, her daughter would like to have a memorial for her year at some point, probably a little closer to some time, before it makes a little more sense. But please keep Linda and her family in your prayers. This is a long time, and I think her daughter is really a little more than that. Thank you. That was her team birthday. Yeah, Robert Jackson. <laughs> I believe we might have one more here. Yes, I, uh, right after services, Gloria and I will be heading to Bakersfield to celebrate the life of my cousin, uh, Freddie Macias, who was killed in a car wreck. I ask you for prayers for him and his mother, who in the last five years has suffered the loss of her husband, her brother, her mother, her father, her brother-in-law, and now her only son. Any other announcements before the congregation today? If not, we will continue on here on uh, page 9. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. And the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our sending hymn, number 744, soon and very soon.
Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thank you.